Well, hello and welcome. It's time for Mastermind Startup Fundraising Office Hours again. I'm Scott Fox. I'm your host here today to talk to you about startup fundraising, helping your startup get going farther, faster, hopefully with some more money. The mission of this show is to increase access to innovation and investment capital so that you can join the internet revolution, hopefully make some money and change the world in a positive way at the same time. So if you're joining us today live on uh, YouTube or Facebook or Blog Talk Radio or maybe LinkedIn, thanks for joining us. Uh, Going to spend an hour or so here together, depending on how many questions you guys have. This is a monthly program where I open up uh, my office here in Southern California to talk to you and uh, hopefully help you out with some of the challenges that are facing your new ventures. So if you'd like to join us live um, for the chat, please head over to YouTube or to LinkedIn, the Startup Council page there or the Scott Fox page on YouTube and uh, enter the chat there. We'll get the chat room going and taking questions and happy to have any of you join us live who are uh, registered in advance, or even we can put up the, uh, the URL if you'd like to check in uh, and um, join me on camera. There it is. You can join me on camera there. There's a bit.ly link there. And if you have a good question that you'd like to talk about or an investor pitch, sometimes we take pitches. People like to practice their quick pitch, no more than two minutes. And they put their pitch up um, verbally here on camera with me. And if they do, uh, we're happy to give them some helpful critique because I'm an active angel investor. Um, I've invested in 20 plus companies and several different funds. I've been at this for a long time. So if I can help you with the strategy for your pitch, we can do that as well. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, the show today, what we're going to do. Like I said, we're going to take questions. So if you want to join me on camera, you can do that. And you will actually win a ticket to our next Masterminds workshop, which is a monthly program that I run also, also uh, mostly via Zoom these days, although it's fun to do them sometimes. Uh, we used to do them all the time face to face here in Southern California. Um, but uh, the Masterminds workshops, the next one will be September 9th. I believe that's a Thursday evening, at least my time, Pacific time. And we'll have uh, 20, 30, 40 entrepreneurs all together uh, bringing questions again. It's a workshop. We're working together to uh, solve problems uh, and talk through uh, critiques for investor pitches as well. And those are um, monthly like this, but they alternate. This is just me talking. So if I can be of help to you, please uh, join me live now and um, put something into the chat room or uh, we will um, have some people coming on hopefully to join me on camera as well. So this show is a combination of uh, Q&A expertise, uh, uh, mostly for me. So who am I? Why, why am I the guy with the microphone? Well, mostly because I did it, right? Um, I'm here. I have the microphone. But I also have 25 years of experience in internet startups. I raised my first venture round a long time ago after I graduated from Stanford for graduate school and got in on the internet game pretty early. Uh, since then, I've spent a lot of time in a lot of different uh, startups from small, uh, very small that you've never heard of to very, very large that you've definitely heard of and um, made some money, but also learned a lot of things. I've packaged that up into several books, as you can see behind me here. These are uh, three three different books. The middle shelf there is the English one and the others are translations. So these are available all over the world, maybe in your native language. If you're joining us from overseas and you're not an English speaker, uh, check your version of amazon.com or your local bookstore. They're in lots and lots of, of uh places that you can uh, down you can download them on Kindle or read them uh, you know on paperback whatever you'd like so I'm the uh, I'm an active angel investor with Tech Coast Angels here in uh, Orange County California as well as nationally I'm also the chairman of the Stanford Angels and Entrepreneurs organization which is here in Southern California and Orange County as well and I'm here doing this as a community service, essentially, to help you and your friends get your startups going farther and faster, like I said. So if you share that mission, uh, I'm glad you're here. And today we're going to take some questions and have some fun. So uh, let me do a couple quick commercials. And I see we've got a couple folks coming in here uh, on the chat room and uh, in the uh, on the video. Excellent. So we'll get going here in a second. Let me just change my uh, caption here. Let me just point out to everybody, uh, the session is being recorded and we'll be sharing this online because it's on YouTube. <laughs> no surprise, right? Um, if you'd like to invite your friends, please have them head over and join us live. The easiest URL to remember is that one, youtube.com slash Scott Fox. Uh, if you're coming in the chat room there, I can see a bunch of you. Great. Nice to see you. Uh, just go ahead and introduce yourselves. Um, you might put into the chat room where you're from. Uh, and of course, if you have a question, that's great too. Happy to uh, help you if I can. And uh, it's always interesting to hear where we're reaching around the world. Uh, so I see uh, Lone and Leslie and Sandy and Samir and Gos and Rachik is in on, looks like he's ready to come on camera. Um, 
Last disclaimer for the moment, this is not qualified legal or financial advice. You should consult your own professional advisors, please. This is for entertainment only, as they say, okay? So uh, this is all just for fun and games. And uh, if you uh, take this advice, please do check with adults uh, who are qualified to advise on your particular situation. I'm doing my best to help. Your mileage may vary. All right, so let's get going. Uh, it's nice to see you guys here. And uh, we're going to take some questions, and I guess there's no reason not to just start here. Um, let's see who we've got to join us today. We've got, uh, let's see, oh, there's Gabriel, and there is Rachik. Hi, guys. Nice to meet both of you. Likewise. Yeah. So, um, well, why don't you, why don't you, who wants to go first? Do you guys want to battle it out, or should I just pick one? Uh, you can go first. You can go first. All right, fair enough. Gabriel's been here before, so we'll have Gabriel. Um uh, check in here. Gabriel, nice to see you. Uh, Likewise. So what's going on and what can we help you with here today? And hello, everybody in the chat room. Go ahead and put your, I'll, I'll catch up on the questions in the chat room when I can. The folks that are on camera get preference, of course, because it makes it more interesting to watch, right? So if you do want to join me on camera, sorry, Gabriel, one second, let me put up that no link problem. so that people can, there you go. If you want to join us on camera, be brave like Gabriel and Rachik, um, and you'll win uh, tickets to the next Masterminds workshop, by the way. Okay. So Gabriel, nice to see you. What's going on? Likewise, Scott. So um, being a very early stage uh, startup um, and not a lot of stuff to uh, report, what should we put on our website? Oh, that's a good one. Okay. Now, as I recall, you have uh, robotics or AI or both, something like that? Right. So we are uh, building a service robot with artificial intelligence. Right. Very cool. And basically what we want to do is we want to make these uh, service robots interact just like you would interact with a human. So you could say, robot, get me this, robot, get me that. And also having the robot use the AI to respond to dynamic scenarios in, in a dynamic world that we live in. So that's uh, basically what we're trying to do. Wow. Okay. Well, um, you're obviously a very smart guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is beyond my technical capability, but it certainly sounds cool. But uh, we can talk about the marketing and the positioning for investors for sure. That's more my expertise, as you know. Um, okay. So uh, first of all, anybody in the chat room that has suggestions, please chime those in. Go ahead and type them in. That's a really good question, right? What does an early stage company put on their website? Um, so this is the sort of thing, by the way, that we talk about a lot in our masterminds group. Too. We go more in depth. So if that's the thing to you, um, the masterminds workshops, like I said, are once a month. The next one is on September 9th. Okay. So, so what should Gabriel put on his website? So please add your comments in there as well. Um, my answer would be, uh, well, what have you got? <laughs> right. I mean, um, you've got a name, you probably have maybe a logo. Um, you probably have the team. Uh, and then what you really have is a vision. So I think probably the vision is where I would start. But the, the question back to you is how, um, what I, like I said, what do you have, but also how stealthy do you want to be? I mean, can you give us a little more background? Um, so um, we're, we're, we're behind the scenes. We're working on the, obviously the AI algorithms. Uh, we've been talking to a, a med tech um, incubator, nothing official. Um, we did get a letter of support from a customer, uh, which is really good. And we also received an invite from the NSF to submit a full proposal. Um, so we're, you know, we're working on a lot of stuff behind the scenes. Um, you know, nothing like we can say, Hey, we've, uh, you know, we've got this grant or we've signed up with this, you know, a lot, a lot of stuff behind the scenes. Right. Right. Well, that's, um, you can, and you can't really put letters of intent up there yet, right? right? right. Just intent, although that's a, that's a huge achievement. So congratulations. You got to start somewhere. That's a great, that's a great start. Sure. Um, I, I'd see a really good idea here in the, um, in the chat room, a couple of people, both Sandy and Brandon, two smart guys, both said, what problem are you solving? And that's a great way to, to position yourself, right? That's good. More, more about the problem. Uh, okay. that, that naturally leads to your solution. Um, I kind of had mush that into vision, right? But that's mm -hmm. to unpack a little more. That's exactly right. I think good, good, good ideas, guys. Right. So we just thought like a few basic things, you know, like news, um, mm -hmm. team, like the vision, like about us, mm -hmm. um, just, just those few simple things. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, we should, uh, talk about the problem and how we want to solve that. I think that's a great idea for a website. Yeah, they're, they're, I think that's the right, uh, right target. What you want to do is, is essentially like the first meeting you have, um, with an investor, like if you meet somebody, not, not a real meeting, but like if you meet somebody in an elevator pitch sort of situation, right? You mm -hmm. want to give them enough to confirm that you're credible and then make them want to ask you for more. 
right? So you don't need to spell out the whole thing. Don't post the whole business plan, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, right, right. competition reasons, but but also just because at this point, you don't really have enough to close the deal anyway. But what you want is them to be interested. And I know I know of at least one startup. Um, actually, that was uh, that's Brandon. Actually, he's in the chat room. Um, he posted some things online and did it apparently just right uh, and got things going that actually customers started calling him, right? Because he had identified a niche with a real problem. So um, if you put up the problem and then your the hint of your solution uh, and then make sure the contact form works, because I can't tell you the number of websites I see uh, that don't have effective contact information, right? They like it, it doesn't sound real, right? It sounds like some scammy thing. So a lot of it is about credibility and, and the problem you're solving. I think that's a, a good place to go. Uh, and there's a bunch more uh, comments in the chat room here. Let's just see if we can give you some more. I don't know if, can you see those, Gabriel? What, where yeah, are you somebody said nothing. <laughs> right, nothing, okay. <laughs> don't get a website. It's a distract. Oh, that's interesting, loan. Okay, so that's, well, that's not a bad point, right? Not, I disagree. I think you should have something, but mm. um, the distraction factor is huge. That's your number one asset as an early stage entrepreneur is you and your time and your, your like brain space, right? If, if you get distracted with the, not that you would, but I'm, I'm talking more generally theoretically here, right? People get consumed with like redesigning their logo or something like really small, you know, you miss the opportunity and there's only so much life that any of us has to give to a new venture, right? And if you spend your time on, you know, website design or, or filing all the proper business licenses and incorporating and setting up your bookkeeping, a lot of people like to it's like fake work, fake progress, right? Like, okay, I'm incorporated now. Okay. But what have you built? Have you talked to any customers? Right. You know, it's like, you gotta, you gotta use your resources wisely and your number one resources is, is you. So I think that point is well taken loan. Um, maybe this website is simply problem statement, contact information done, right? You could have that done. Like by the time this call is over, <laughs> right. Sure. Maybe, maybe that's enough. You know, that, I think it's a fair point. Um, Diana says, is the website for regular people to see or investors or both? Uh, kind of both probably, right, at this point. Um, so that's an interesting, but it's a good point to think about who your target is. You really want to think about what you're trying to accomplish and then work backwards from that, right? Are you trying to, um, you know, put competitors on notice that you exist? Are you trying to attract investors to call you or trying to attract customers to call you? Are you just trying to show your mom that you're not wasting your time in the basement? <laughs> right? I mean, what's, what's, you know, <laughs> Those are all legitimate objectives, right? So um, I would work backwards from that and talk to your partners uh, so that you use your time effectively on that. All okay, right. great, thanks. You bet, nice to see you. Good luck nice with things. Nice to see you, Scott. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Sure. All right, moving along here. Got several other folks here. Let's see, we've got, uh, let's see, Cliff and Gabriel and Leslie. Hey, Leslie, nice to see you too. Awesome. So I think uh, Rachik was next. Uh, does that sound good, Rachik? You uh, come yeah, on? That, that's perfect. Uh, so okay. thanks Scott, uh, for taking my question. Um, can you hear me sure. okay? I can. Hang on. Let me take a uh, hi, Leslie, and hi, hi, Cliff. We'll get back to you in a moment. Okay. okay. Great. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so my where, name is Rich. Where, yeah. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Washington, D.C. And uh, yeah, thanks for taking the time to speak with me today uh, and speak sure. with all of us. Um, so the name of our company is called Blinkly. And the fundamental, we're a software company, and the fundamental problems that we're solving is that we don't think it's okay that Google and Microsoft can read your data uh, from their search and their email, and then create a psychometric profile of you and then sell, sell that profile to sort of a shadowy economy of third-party data brokers. And I'm with um, you. Awesome. Yeah, we, we also don't think that it's okay that our uh, near peer adversaries are getting access to our data and using it for nefarious purposes. I think Colonial Pipeline, uh, the ransomware attacks that are happening in the University of California system, for education system, for example. Mm -hmm. So um, the vision for our company is to build a quantum resistant end to end encrypted version of Office 365 or the Google G Suite to solve these problems. And for the last couple of years, we've been singularly focused on the development of one application, which is a quantum resistant end-to-end -end encrypted email service to solve the problems I just mentioned. And a couple of months ago, um, about two and a half months ago, we pushed our product to production. And uh, we've been very fortunate uh, to be able to hit six figures in revenue already, which is really exciting. And um, we're actually not looking to fundraise at this point, but 
Um, my, 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 my question to you is that where we've gotten the most traction so far has been with the U.S. government and broadly, you know, sort of the Five Eyes nations, if you're familiar, you know, UK, Canada, that kind of thing, and uh, Australia, New Zealand. And my, my question is that um, our product is sort of, um, our, our product is capable of being sold to a multiple different verticals like healthcare and real estate. And my question is that our go-to-market strategy is that we obviously, you know, we want to sell the same widget across all of these different areas. And we think that the widget, the, the application that we built to this point could resonate really well in real estate and law enforcement. The challenge is that our team doesn't personally have those relationships. Mm-hmm. And the, met, the sort of tactics that we've used have been, um, have been email and they've been uh, LinkedIn and just trying to leverage personal networks. And to be honest, it hasn't been effective. And we don't think it's because there's not a need, but because we just don't have enough relationships to kind of open that door. And we're bootstrapped in the company. Uh, So with that in mind, I was wondering if there were specific tactics that you might recommend we could consider. Yeah, okay. Um, Well, first of all, congratulations. I mean, that is really real progress for a, a big, hairy, audacious goal. That's what they used to call it at Stanford Business School, BHAG, right? Big, hairy, yeah. audacious goal. You're going to take on Microsoft. <laughs> yeah. go, go for it. That's awesome. Um, so that's that's exciting. And it isn't just a dream. You've actually re- realized revenue, real revenue, six-figure revenue from this. This is That's very impressive, Jake. That, yeah, that, that that's right. And, and for, for what it's worth, just to clarify just a little bit, um, we are competing with Microsoft and Google, but in the sense that they're not even in the same class because they're not secure at all. Right. You know, so it's more like Proton Mail, Tutanota, Hushmail, Zix, Data Motion. Okay. Um, those are closest. Those are companies that are closer to our competitors. But yeah, you're you're absolutely right, though. Okay. Yeah. Well, still, I, I admire ambition. Right. That's yeah. why we do this. Yeah. I, this is that's you're literally the kind of person I do this show for because that ambition and optimism is the most positive thing in our world right now. The world's a freaking mess, right? <laughs> but, but entrepreneurs are out there. Gonna we're gonna make it happen anyway. So right on. Okay. Thanks. So. So, okay, so everybody in the chat room, let's let's offer Rachik some help here. They've got a product that's in market and they're trying to figure out how to hit the, their target verticals, but without really knowing anybody there. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, Rachik? that's okay. right. Okay, so not an easy answer, right? You're obviously a smart guy, so I don't have a, a silver bullet for you, unfortunately. Um, and you've tried the LinkedIn and email stuff, which is the obvious place to start. Yeah, it's, it's like a 1% yield, something like yeah. that. Yeah, so, okay, so... Well, there's a lot. You're talking about business development now, rather than yeah. sales. In the sense of like developing relationships is a long-term consultative sell. Mm-hmm. Um, it means you have to think a little orth- orthogonally, you know, like a, come at it from a different angle. So the obvious place for uh, most of the folks on this call with tech businesses, especially a SaaS type business, is to um, invest in in paid growth, right? Like like ads, basically, right? Yeah. And there are people that really specialize in that stuff. Um, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, you know, you're, you have very much a business to business market, it sounds like. So it, maybe it's not Instagram, but maybe it is, right? Um, you want to be where your competitors are not. Unfortunately, that takes money. Um, and I have other ideas, but just to unpack that one a little. Are you guys funded or how, how, what's your financial situation? Um, we're, so we're just bootstrapping the company. Um, the reason is that um, we just we're trying not to take outside venture for as long as we can. Uh-huh. Okay, good for you. And then there might be a point where we would take it, but we're just not interested at this time. Yeah. Okay, but I, that's that's awesome. I guess I'm digging for. Do you have a budget at all? Could you do any paid? Do you have five? Yeah, or- I mean, yeah, yeah, we we certainly could. Oh, we oh. certainly could. I mean, we okay. could do it. You know, in the tens of thousands, I would say, if we really, if we, I mean, look, at the end of the day, if it if it provides, if it's if there's utility above our spend, it's always worth it, right? Good. Okay. Well, that's great. Awesome. A lot of uh, bootstrapped entrepreneurs don't have the spend, right? <laughs> so yeah. gotta Fair be gotta check. Um, okay, so uh, the best resource I have in that direction, and this is not my favorite approach for you, but just to get it on the table and to help other people, um, there's a, a startup called Growth U, uh, Growth University, and they're a spinoff from the launch funds. Jason Calacanis is a well-known angel investor, uh, yeah. and the launch uh, company uh, incubator created this company as a spinoff. It's what they used to train their own companies in growth tactics. And these are primarily customer acquisition online, you know, paid at paid acquisition sorts of tools. As far as I understand it, uh, Craig, uh, Craig Zingerlein is the CEO and founder. Uh, and, uh, he is based in DC actually. Oh, great. <laughs> So that might work out um, if that's the avenue you want to go. And I should fully disclose I'm an investor in that company, right? So I, I think they're cool. <laughs> but they're also the the reason I invested is because 
they are the only ones I know that are trying to productize this problem for startups, right? Uh, big companies don't have a very different perspective on growth, right? But they are specifically targeting early stage startup founders who need to grow online. So check out Growth You. And I think there's probably some discount you get if you mention my name or, or something. I, I can put you in touch if, if you can't Great, figure it out. Thank you. And that applies to everybody, actually. It's Growth University. If anybody wants to put that, um, Google that and put it in the chat room, other people would probably uh, find it cool. There's, I know there's a free couple lessons anyway, and it's kind of a membership thing, like a, a class cohort. Anyway, okay. you can pick it up. Okay. So the other, the, the more strategic approach is, is to do something other people aren't. Um, so knocking on doors is hard. Um, and if you have a little money in the bank, it sounds like you guys kind of, you have a little bit of elbow room here. Maybe you could head more towards content marketing. Um, have you done much of that? Like publishing articles? Okay. So maybe there's an angle for you to create a, a really good, I hate to say this old fashioned word blog, you know, or newsletter, um, or publishing things on LinkedIn instead of just out, uh, pushing people, um, pushing people, you know, like ham knocking on the door, but to actually try to attract them in, right? Because that way they're kind of pre-sold and it's a much longer fuse, right? It doesn't happen real quickly, um, but it, th that's an angle to take. And I'll tell you something that's worked really well for me in the past, and you guys might try this if you have the skill set, um, is to actually do either an interview series on the blog or okay. a podcast or a video series, right? So something where you have an excuse to call the influencers that you want to reach and build a relationship that isn't just a sales call, right? Mm -hmm. So it's one thing to call some big shot and say, hi, I'd like to you know, tell you about my product, won't you buy it? It's a totally different conversation when you call and say, hey, I'd like to have you on my show and interview you because you're so smart and you could share your expertise with our audience. That's a totally different conversation and the hit rate goes way up. Yeah. Um, and, and that can work um, in any industry, really. Um, and uh, again, as kind of a long fuse for, for the sales, but, um, but might get you into the, some of the conversations that you want to have in a way that uh, positions you. It positions you from the start as opposed to just a cold call. Um, how's that? Is that useful? That's, yeah, that's really helpful. No, thank, thank you. I really appreciate it. And thanks for your time. Okay, awesome. Nice to meet you. Keep us posted. If, you're, if you do start looking for funding, let us know. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet okay. You. Let's look at, uh, okay, thank you for joining us, Rachik from DC. Okay, so um, let's look in the chat room here. Oh, Leslie, thank you for that, uh, that uh, URL there. Um, you know, that's funny. I don't think I can post in the chat. Can you post that in the public chat? I, I don't know how to do that. I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm afraid I'll lose you guys, but it looks like it's growth-u.com, growth-u.com. Thank you, Leslie. Uh, we'll have Leslie on here in a minute. Um, oh, okay. She can't either because she's in the waiting to come on camera. Okay. Uh, before I get there, Leslie, let's, let me just check the chat room, folks. And uh, if you want to come on camera with me as well, there's that link again. Okay. So Sandy says, who can you partner with? Okay. That's a great point, Sandy. Thank you. So Rachik, before you leave, that we, we totally, I, I don't have enough time to unpack the whole book, right? But Sandy is right. Um, partnerships are the other way to go. Find people that are already selling to the people that you want to sell to and do some kind of partnership with them. Um, not competitors, I mean somebody adjacent, right? So you're selling, say, a secure email service, find who their cybersecurity providers are, or you know somebody in, in that vein that has a sell cycle and a, to the same sort of person as you're doing and figure out if you can cross sell or, or even cut them in on the, uh, on the, give them a commission or something, right? At least to get going. Um, and then uh, that's a really good one. Um, that's actually a, a more established way of doing things than the podcast angle I was suggesting, but that's a super way to do things. That's why I used to do things back before podcasts existed when I was a biz dev guy. Um, and then uh, we didn't talk about trade shows either, right? Or conferences. Speaking at conferences is a really good angle because uh, it gets you visibility, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, we could go on all day about this, but hopefully that's some good one. Uh, Waleed says reselling is another way you get others selling for you. Tech consulting is a great way to start. Yep. Thank you, Waleed. Exactly right. Um, Sandy chimes in. That's a win-win situation. Exactly. Um, and Diana says there's a growth capital conference for people who already have a running business. It's free. Oh, that's interesting, Diana. Maybe you could put a URL for that into the chat room. Um, let me back up the chat here to see um, what I've missed here. So uh, guys, put in where you're from in the chat room. I, I, that's just a kick for me because I, I don't do any marketing for this show other than a few emails. So it's always uh, entertaining and, and interesting for me to see where we're reach, reaching. 
Okay, so loan says, okay, angel investors. Okay, we'll try that in a minute. Uh, Ghost mobile apps. Okay, Bihan from Sri Lanka. Great, nice to meet you. That's a long way from home. Um, okay, Leslie's ready to come on. Uh, Sandy, the uh, on-camera link is on the screen right now. Uh, Re Rishab, I, I know it's a very case-specific. What fact? Okay, this is a fairly quick one. Rishab Java asks, I know this is very case-specific, but on average for a new tech startup that's just launched, by what factor would you multiply their revenue to get their valuation? So good question, Rishab. I think I can do that one fairly quickly. Uh, valuation is a is a is black magic right there's no right answer um but the rightest answer there is is that you look at your competitors right that's basically the best you can do because that's what everybody else is doing right valuation is not something that is um there's not a formula for it uh i mean there are there are lots of formulas that will justify the number you get but the fact is that any investor uh, or partner or anybody even employees who are valuing their stock options are going to look at the valuation of the company based on what this company's peers are doing in the market. So that's where I would start. Uh, and then uh, the other question is whether you factor on revenue. And by the way, congratulations if you have revenue already and you're looking for valuation based on revenue, that's good. Um, but some companies value on revenue, some value on EBITDA, some, you know, there's lots of different ways to what, what is it you're multiplying, right? There's a, there's a, uh, what do you call that? Two factors in the equation, I guess, right? Um, so I would look at your competitors. All right. Um, sorry, guys, just trying to catch up on the, the uh, chat. Uh, yeah, Brandon, Diana. Yes, Gus, yes. Uh, okay. Okay, Ghost has another good, this is back to Gabriel, if you're still here, Gabriel, your question. Ghost, did you see that in the chat room where Gabriel said, "Is the, this is about your website, Gabriel, is there enough interest to sell it as a product? From my quick look, I couldn't find much demand for robots to automate tasks for you that much. So that's, I don't know if that's true or not. I suspect there is demand, but that's your challenge, Gabriel, is to express the problem you're solving so that people like ghosts go, ah, I get it, right? You can't presume that people agree with you that there is a problem, right? So you need to position that in a good way. Um, okay, Mohammed, Samir, uh, okay. Sandy, okay, reselling, wow, okay, a lot of folks here today. Okay, Ghost is near, near London, okay, all right. Thanks for staying up with us in the evening. And Dallas, Waleed, okay. Okay, now let's go back to the on cameras here. Um, let's see, I think Leslie was next. Let's see, Leslie, that's, oh, that's not Leslie, hey, sorry, hang on, Glenn. <laughs> yeah, Glenn. sorry, hey there, Leslie. You guys are, uh, let me, sorry, this thing is a little complicated. Is that it? No, nope, that's not it either. There's Leslie. Okay. Okay. Hey, Leslie. Nice to see you. Can you... Yeah. I'm trying... Hey, Scott. Good to see you too. Okay. There we go. All right. So what's going on in Leslieville today? <laughs> yeah. So uh, came came here a while ago to the other venue, um, which was on Zoom, and told you about my company. Yes. Um, and we've made a ton of changes and progress since then. As you may remember, <laughs> we are ed tech. So we take, um, we allow educators to create stories that are animated based on kids' voice. So kids get to talk to the creatures and the, the teachers can create lessons based on the kid interacting with the, with the computer. Very cool. Um, yeah. So uh, we think it's cool. Um, but there's a couple things happening right now. As you know, kids are going back to school um, and there's a big debate about masks. So what we are going to do, and we're doing this for market research to get our name out there to figure out who's interested, who's not, is we're creating stories that we're going to publish that have the kid interacting with the, with the bear who's going back to school. So they get to tell bear, they get to encourage bear about going back to school and what it'll be like. Um, so we have one like that, and then we're going to have another one with wearing masks. And we'll ask the kids in different scenarios, should you wear a mask here? Should you wear a mask here? And if they choose the mask, then Bear does a little dance. And if they don't, then he doesn't. You know, so it's interactive with voice. So my question is, um, how do we take advantage of this? How? So this is market research for us. So how do we mine who's interested? How do we figure out who to send it to in the first place? 
how do we mind who's interested and get the best bang for our buck? Okay. So let me spit that back to you to see if I got it. Uh, got it. Mm -hmm. So it's a children's educational company. And the, the example you gave of the bear and the mask is just an example, right? You, the, the, the software, you could create lots of stuff, right? That's right. The software one. can create lots of stuff, but we specifically are creating those stories as a pilot to show. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, and who's the target customer here? Who do you think you want to reach? educators and um therapists therapists we've, got, we've also gotten some interest in in medical communities that are interested in educating kids on say diabetes they've just been diagnosed okay. that kind of thing mm -hmm. right okay okay so this is a specific that, that what concerns me here is that you're talking about back to school and my kids have been back to school for three weeks already like we went back really early so you have very limited views on this, right? I mean, in the next week or so, is that? Is but, that yeah, something? it'll be pretty soon. It also depends on where you live in the country. I think yeah. California is early. Right, right. Okay. Um, okay, so how would you get to the educators and therapists and the medical community in a short amount of time? Okay, so that's the question for the audience. If anybody wants to... Uh, to, uh, co contribute in the chat room there. Uh, and let me give a quick plug, by the way, if you're watching, uh, you can watch us on, on LinkedIn or YouTube. There are chat rooms there and you can comment and it will show up here. Uh, and we'll be happy to help you out if, uh, if we can. Okay. So, okay. Well, given the specific target you have and a fairly short time frame, um, I think that probably the most efficient way is to back to what I was talking a minute ago about growth university, like targeted paid advertising, um, either on a test basis or on a, on a larger basis. Um, I think the, the test, here's the trick. Um, there is a way to get to exactly who you want to get every time. And it's called advertising, right? And they pay, but it's expensive, right? Especially mm -hmm. if you want a specific um, target, a high value target, potentially like in the medical community, right? They're going to be more expensive than, uh, you know, teenagers who are hanging out playing Fortnite or whatever. Um, so um, I don't know how much, money you guys are you funded i forget you have no we're pretty funded okay so so you're you want to be careful with this right um but i think at a minimum you could run some tests and figure out what your roi might be right so if you could find uh probably more than a hundred dollars but maybe five hundred dollars or something you know and more is better of course uh and go i would think maybe uh maybe linkedin um and uh, try to hit those specific folks um, with a very customized ad, but just do them in small bites or maybe on Google because Google, here's, here's something interesting um, that may be obvious to folks, but if it's not, hopefully it's helpful. Um, LinkedIn is kind of like a conference, right? So you put up ads, it's kind of like a trade show. You're hoping you're going to hit people that are at the right trade show for your industry and they're going to walk by and see your banner and maybe click on it, which is great because it's very targeted. Google is the reverse. People only go to Google with intent they are looking for something specific, right? Um, so if you put an ad on Google, you only pay when they click on it. It's because they were looking for that. The ad is only even displayed based on the keywords and the text that you put in the ad. So if you put, uh, I'm not sure what your keywords would be, but just roughly, you know, a, a children's uh, COVID uh, training tool or help or something like that, you know, mm -hmm. it will only be displayed when somebody's looking for that. So that could be very useful as opposed to say Facebook, where people are really just there kind of hanging out. It's like a, you know, kind of like a, you're at a Starbucks and a, in a, a truck with a billboard drives by, right? You're not really paying attention necessarily. So you want to use your money in the environment that will have the most impact for you. So my point is that to me sounds like LinkedIn because you've it's professional environment already. People mm -hmm. talk about professional things, uh, which might include these business needs, which are serving the children in their communities to reduce their COVID apprehension, or Google, where people are actually looking for that solution to that specific problem already. So those two sound like the places I would go. Maybe let's pick a number, 500 bucks. If you could spend $200 on each of those mm -hmm. and then kind of see what worked, and then you've got an extra $100 to confirm your thesis that, oh yeah, it's Google when I do this, or it's LinkedIn when I do this. Um, I think you would know a lot more uh, probably, you know, by the end of the week um, about who you're reaching and what they're responding to uh, that might be helpful. Is that useful? Yes. Yes. Oh. Um, okay. Yeah. Let's see. Um, let's see what the chat room has to add to that. Um, 
Sandy says, yeah, you need use cases with videos showing them in action. Well, that would be great. That's probably on the website. So that's a good question. Like what, if you, if they click on your ad, what do they get? Right. So you need a landing page that, that confirms right. them. I clicked on the right thing. Yes. This, this was a good move. I didn't go to some scammy, you know, right. scary hacker site. Oh, and look, there's kids doing this kind of thing. Yes. That matches my interest. So that's a good, good point. Get the product market fit. Um, yeah, Facebook groups. That's right, Sandy. That's the other angle here. Facebook groups are a little less professional, obviously, than LinkedIn, uh, but there are groups in Facebook. And if there is a children's therapists group, you know, or something like that, that might be a good place to do as well. Because Facebook does, at least as far as I know, still have the, the pretty much the best targeting. Like you can pick exactly the stuff that uh, that Richie was was complaining about earlier, and that I agree, where people take all your data and they target you. Well, Facebook's really damn good at that. So, so that right. might be most effective in another way because they can target the best. Um, okay, so there, I, I, that's what I got for now. Is that useful? Yeah, I, I think that's a good start, and uh, I will take it and run with it. Yeah. So okay, good. Great, thanks. You're welcome. Nice to see you. Um, nice to see you. The other venue uh, Leslie was referring to was the Masterminds Workshop. Um, so that next one that of those is on September 9th, like I said. So I'll probably see her there, and maybe you guys do. All right. Nice to see you, Leslie. Thanks. All right. Let's hop over here to Cliff. Cliff has been very patient. Hi, Cliff. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> All right. Hi. Nice to meet you. You too. You too. In a very, at the moment, hot Chicago. Chicago. Um, okay. Right. So I'm kind of the definitive on your own entrepreneur. I am a 30 year IT consultant in the payment space, which pays the bills and funds at least two separate businesses. So I have a, let's say it's a mobile payments toolkit that is dangerously close to production ready. <laughs> um, and I have a, this would be a product for the merchant risk market that is, I'm in very early in the very beginnings of building it. I have one sort of partner, but I'm pretty much on my own. So my kind of question is, and a lot of what I do as a consultant, right, is they don't know what they don't know. And that's where I'm coming from now. I don't know where I don't know. I'm right. Facebook averse. I just don't do um, the other, you know, no real social media. I have a big um, LinkedIn site, but that's it as far as social media. So kind of two layered questions. One is, I don't even know where to begin with social media. I would like to grow my social media presence for my consultancy, but I also wonder, like right now, my two other ventures are completely separate. Like if you know me in the business, you might know what I'm up to with these products. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering, do is there a reason to kind of mix them together? Is there a reason to keep them apart? Um, that's especially kind of the I don't know what I don't know. Like, am I missing something there? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, let's take the second one first. Um, and the short answer there is I don't know, because there's a lot of <laughs> specifics about who you are and who you're marketing to and um, right. stuff like that. It, it, branding is a delicate and difficult thing. I mean, um, you can I don't know how well you know me, but I have 14 different brands. I have masterminds and startup council and startup office hours. I got three different books. I got the, this this thing over here. And I'm not I, it's hard because if you're an entrepreneurial person, you come up with new ideas and they need new names. Right. It's like my right. kids, you know, they each have a different, of course they do <laughs> they have different names, right? So, they're right. so yeah, I got like five others that are all like approaching, okay, I'm actually going to commit some time to these. <laughs> right. Right. So I think the, the, the answer I do would share is you need to work backward from the customer's perception, right? So if the customer is the same, then you probably want to have at least some overarching brand name so they don't get confused. But if they're different customers, then the marketing is different and they don't not going to cross over anyway. So that's probably Good point. Um, Good point. Okay. So I, I would look at it from the customer's point of view. The thing not to do is something I've been digging a hole. I've been digging myself out of literally this week is if you're doing billing, make sure that the billing name, like on a credit card or bank account matches the product or business name. Cause I, in one case, I literally am doing this this week. 
I built a thing online and it's making money, but I, I was lazy and I used the account from another one. So now when every anybody pays for it, they get the charge and like, what's this charge? Who's this? Oh yeah. Right. They and call them dynamic descriptors. Um, right. I'm painfully aware of all that. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like you're an expert, right? So I, that's what I need, some dynamic descriptors because it's a mess. <laughs> so, right, right. So I hear yeah. you. Um, okay, so the other question I maybe have a little more uh, to, to talk about is social media. So social media is, it's a hard one. If you don't do it, if you don't love it, it's such a chore. And, um, exactly. and it only gets bigger, right? Like I wrote my, my second book, um, this one. This is this is written in 2009 um, and it's uh, next generation marketing strategies. Right. Um, and uh, in this book, I covered all of social media because there were only like three of them back then. Right. right? <laughs> and, and I was a, I was like a black belt. I knew I really did. I knew all about Twitter. I knew everything about not everything. But, you know, I was I was qualified to write a book of how many ever hundred pages. I mean, this is a, a serious book, right? Like all my books. Um because it was small as Twitter and Facebook, uh, YouTube was newish and I don't know, uh, whatever, you know, another one or two. And the recommendation back in these days was that you get really good at all of them and you could just be everywhere, but that just doesn't work anymore. There's just no, right. um, you kill yourself and, and you won't make any impact. So my, my advice to you is I think you're actually okay. You have a problem that you don't want to do it necessarily, but LinkedIn right. is a fine place to be. If you can go and be the king of LinkedIn or even the prince, you know, in your genre vertical, um, that's legit, right? I mean, there are a lot of companies that would die for that. So if you're comfortable these days, my advice on social media is more about like, what are you, what are you comfortable with and what do you at least not hate and maybe even like enough that you'll actually do it? Because social media right. requires that social piece. And it's like going to a party where you don't know anybody or you don't like the people. Like, who wants to go to that party? Why would you do that, right? You need to pick. It's like I was talking about earlier with um, with Gabriel. You only have so much brain space and energy for this. And you why not put it in the channel that you like, right? Like if I said, Cliff, you have to go and do Twitter, but you hate Twitter. What? Of course, it's not going to work, right? Right. <laughs> But you like LinkedIn, so maybe that's your thing, man. Then that, that's perfectly okay. There's enough people on LinkedIn now, and you already have a base. I would just beat the hell out of LinkedIn and be the, you know, own that. Do some, publish some articles or you know whatever you haven't done yet. Double down on that. Um, and and you have to be careful about your other question, which is the branding, right? Like which brand right. are you using when you do that? Um, but I think that's a totally legit way to go. Um, cool. Because you, and you know that that. That helps tremendously confirms because, yeah, I mean, what I do, it's a pretty narrow kind of market. There's not a lot of people who do what we do. And right. but LinkedIn, you know, most of the ones I know are on LinkedIn. So right. maybe well, it's time good. for me to finally just go professional with, you know, the paid and really. Yeah. Right. Maybe publish some articles. OK. Yeah. I mean, that could be you. You could be the LinkedIn guy and man, you could do a lot worse. Right. I mean, that, oh, that absolutely. Would yeah, yeah, it's a great. I mean, payments right now is the business to be in. Um, it keeps me very busy. Yeah, I'll bet. yeah, that's so. right. Good, congratulations. Yeah, fintech is, yeah, it's a good place to be. Oh All yeah. All right. Well, enjoy your Chicago. Well, thank, stuff. thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, nice to meet you. All right. So there we go. That was Cliff from Chicago. Uh, nice Midwestern guy like myself. Um, okay. So who else is still here? We got a bunch of you in the chat room. Let me see if I can catch up with the chat. If you haven't yet, uh, join us, uh, in the chat room and, um, sorry, I'm trying to see into the chat here. Um, catch up on the chat here. Go ahead and type in over on YouTube, I think is the easiest place. Although I see, yeah, most of you look like you're chatting from the YouTube channel. Um, I thought you could do that on LinkedIn as well, but it doesn't look like any of you. Yeah. Okay. So I guess it's just YouTube chat. Okay, so let's see. Um, Brandon, could you use your pay mobile payment system for transactions? Okay, that's interesting. Brandon's suggesting that you, uh, that's for Cliff, I think. Um, you Maybe there's some overlap there for you. Uh, two birds with one stone sort of thing. Uh, Brandon, why don't you come on camera? I'm curious how, uh, how you've done since last time. I made some introductions for you, I think, right? Uh, I'm curious how that went. If you're somewhere where you can turn on a camera, let me know, it'd be good to see you. Uh, Sandy, Sh Sandy, happy birthday to you. That's fun. Sandy's a local here in Southern California, comes to my in-person masterminds 
uh, uh, events when when we can have those, which has not been lately, unfortunately. Um, Waleed, uh, yeah, good, good point about natural language translation. Sandy says transfer, th uh, target things by disease. Okay, so now I'm, um, I was trying to go back here to loan. So loan, if you're still here, um, but the best place to find angel investors. Okay, that's where I'm going to go. And then uh, ghosts will talk about mobile apps. Um, well, let me do the mobile apps first, because that's, that's a, uh, I think I can handle that one quick, more quickly. So um, Goes from Goes, I guess that's your name from outside London says, do you think mobile apps are still worth it as a new investment? So um, this is an interesting question because it's almost philosophical, right? What is worth a new investment? Um, investors don't know, you know, you're the entrepreneur. And that's the beauty of what we do as entrepreneurs. If you see an opportunity, then you're right, right? Um, it's like, uh, I think Henry Ford said, you know, you can, if, uh, if you believe uh, you can do a thing, you can, or something like that anyway, you get the idea. Like if you see something in mobile apps, I don't know. I don't build mobile apps. I never have. I mean, I've been involved in some of them, but, but that's not my thing, right? So um, that's your job as the entrepreneur, which is why it's so exciting, is to find these niches. Now, if you're, you know, there's a number of ways to, you know, if you want to come on camera, we could talk about it more. But, but the, um, I'm just reading into your one line here. If you're asking, are mobile apps over? Well, maybe, you know, things are not, apps are a little, the marketplace is certainly different than it was when apps were so discreet and separate from the web. And, you know, before that, there were, uh, um, what were those old ones called? WAP devices, uh, WAP apps, whatever, you know, it's, it's evolving, right? So, so. I'm not sure which part of your question you're hitting there. Um, are mobile apps worth investment? I don't know. It depends on the metrics, right? What have you built? Have you shown that there's some customer demand? Uh, if you have and people are paying you for it, then yeah, double down, right? Um, but then, of course, once you get to that point, you got to look at the competition, right? Is this something that other people are doing? And the fact that you have revenue means that you know a bunch of other people are going to flood in? Or do you have a defensible position uh, either through you know patents or... Uh, trade secrets or through market penetration, first mover advantage, or even just branding or partnerships, you know, what is there about this business? So um, you need to kind of look at it holistically. And this is true for everybody. Look at every opportunity and think, you know, what is it about this that is a business? And this is probably the number one piece of advice I have for all of you. Um, uh, hold on, Brandon asked for that camera thing. Let me put that back up in case anybody else wants to join us. There we go. Um, my number one thing for all of you is that there's every entrepreneur is split. It's like the yin yang thing, right? You have to be dedicated and so excited about the product and the problem you're solving and the way that you're delivering that to customers. That is a hundred percent your job to focus on the product solution, you know, the market fit thing, right? The problem is you have another job that is a hundred percent your job at the same time, which is expressing that as a business. Because investors aren't looking at your product. Like we don't really honestly care that much about the product. I might, I might have sympathy for the vertical you're in, you know, like if you're helping kids with uh, COVID go back to school or you have more secure email, you know, or you have payment, uh, new payment fintech infrastructure. Those are all completely legitimate, exciting things that it's your job. These are examples, obviously, from today, from Leslie and Cliff and, and Rachik. You know, it's your job to be excited about that stuff. But it's my job to look at all three of those. They have nothing to do with each other, right? We couldn't have picked, thank you guys, we couldn't have picked three much more disparate examples, right? And, and you know, an investor has to look at all those and compare them. So we can't be as invested in the product. We have to be invested in the business. So that's your job. You know, are mobile apps a good place to invest? I have no idea. You have to tell me what it is about mobile apps that are going to make this a business that I want to invest in. And that's the other 100% of your job um, to wear both of those hats, you know, the left side and the right side of your brain. Um, and hopefully that will help you evaluate. But I would um, really just encourage you to decide, right? You're the entrepreneur. And that's the beauty of what we do as, as founders is figuring that out for ourselves. Um, okay. So we'll talk about angel investors in a second. Oh, okay. Well, here's, let's see, here's Brandon. Excellent. Nice to see you. Uh, hold on. There we go. Hey, would you guys mind if we took a group shot here? These are really helpful to me. I'm going to put you all on camera. Hey, Brandon, I'm going to put you all on camera at the same time. 
because then it looks like this is a really big and popular show. And <laughs> there we go. No, nope. oh, hold on. Yeah, there we go. That's one. And then let's see this way. I'm just showing off now, right? There we go. That's good. <laughs> and it helps it look like people show up to these because they do, right? And that's useful. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, Leslie and Cliff and Rachik. Um, sorry, Gabriel, I didn't see you come on there, but we're gonna get there. He is. There's Gabriel. <laughs> okay, thank you. And Rachik, awesome guys. Um, this is back to that social media thing. Okay, so Brandon, hey, how are you? So what's yeah, going pretty on? Pretty good. Oh, nice. uh, <laughs> yeah. So I connected with uh, Scott Browski. So Excellent. I'm actually supposed to meet with him tomorrow. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So we're gonna have like an hour mentoring session deal to okay. see how he can help me. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't really have too much to update you on. I've gotten a few more people interested in it. And I did kind of a little trick, because um, it's a, it's currently it's a physical game, right? And mm -hmm. so I'm working on the digital version. But um, what, what I did was I basically said, um, you know, that the game isn't available yet. Because I've noticed that when I got most of my sales at the beginning, it was like before it was available. It was pre-order. And so that's when people were like, wait, I can't get it yet. I will now I definitely want it. Interesting. It was like a weird sales trick and I haven't gotten sales since then. And so I just said, okay, well, it's not available yet. Um, just let me know if you're interested. And people seem to like that. Um, okay. So it just maybe well, a little sales trick. This, this is for Gabriel um, and anybody else that's interested in their website. Brandon's the guy I was talking about. He put up a website and he didn't even have anything to sell yet. And people started pinging him asking to buy it. <laughs> so that's part of the secret, it sounds like. Yeah, definitely. Okay, well, that's a good tip. Um, and then the other thing, uh, Brandon, that he's talking about, I made an introduction for him to the SBDC. And this is true for everybody here, at least in the United States. The Small Business Development Centers are a service of the U.S. government, part of the Small Business Administration. And the SBDCs, I don't know how many of them there are, but there have to be dozens, maybe hundreds across the U.S., and the introduction that he's talking about that he's meeting with tomorrow is the Small Business Development Center in, in Riverside, right? Aren't you in mm -hmm. the... Well, yeah, I'm near Riverside, like 12, 15 minutes away. Yeah, okay. So he's going to go meet with them. And the SBDCs are charged. It's your tax money, uh, fellow Americans. It's our tax money paying for consulting to early stage companies. So um, this is a great resource for all of us. And I, I know the director over there, obviously. So I, I connected them because they're near each other geographically. So awesome. All right. Well, good. Good to see you. Thanks for your your comments in the chat room too. Helpful stuff. Uh, and yeah, keep me posted. That's exciting. Will do. Thanks, Scott. Right. right on. Nice to see you. You too. Okay. So that's good. Updates. People making progress. That's a good thing. I like to hear about the progress. Um, okay. So I was going to go back to talk about uh, angel investors here. We got a uh, five minutes left or so. Uh, let me just see if anything else came in here while I was talking. I keep getting these new messages. Uh, okay. Okay, so let's talk about, sorry, just reading here. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so Loan said, the best place to find angel investors. Okay, so the best place to find angel investors, um, it, it's, it's a big topic, right? Um, I, I keep thinking about writing another book and that will definitely be a part of it. Um, but the best place to find angel investors, it depends. It's funny because angel investors are, there's kind of levels of angel investor now. Uh, traditionally an angel investor was kind of like your uncle or your, your, you know, your cousin's friend who was a dentist and had some extra cash and they put in you know, 50 grand cause you were a good kid from the neighborhood, that kind of idea. Uh, and, but it's really grown up and there are now, you know, semi pro and even, I guess, professional angels. I, I guess I might even fall in that category. I spend most of my time these days, uh, when I'm not talking to you guys as a, an investor, um, and that just means that we invest our own money as opposed to a venture capital firm, which invests uh, much larger amounts of money, usually from other investors. People invest in the firm and then they invest in you sort of thing. So where do you find angel investors? Well, there's a couple ways to think about that. Uh, geographically is the traditional way, which is in your neighborhood, right? So if you are in a uh, target rich environment like the Bay Area uh, or any big city, uh, Chicago, LA, New York, whatever, um, London, there are people around for sure. Um, if you're not there, luckily, uh, one of the few benefits of the pandemic has been that we're all much more online and accessible via Zoom and, and conferences that are virtual these days. So any of you that are looking for angel investors, I would look in a couple places. One is there are conferences. There are conferences all the time, um, different organizations uh, to, uh, well, let me, let me do those separately. So the conferences and events are online. 
So look on Eventbrite, um, look on, uh, and just search in Google, right? Um, but I would encourage you all to do some targeting here, not just any angel. You want to probably put like angel investor, uh, artificial intelligence or angel investor, um, natural language software startup or whatever, you know, your keywords are because you don't you want to just spray and pray. That's waste your time and you won't get much response either. The more targeted you can be, the better. So I would look for events. There's all kinds of them online these days. I, I get invited to a couple every day. Uh, so I think a quick Google or two would probably point you in a lot of right directions. Second, there are a lot of organizations. I belong to Tech Coast Angels, which is the largest angel investor group in uh, the United States. Um, we have uh, five chapters across Southern California, but there are many, many other angel groups in pretty much every city now. Certainly the big cities have, like New York has a bunch of them, um, but even in the smaller cities, uh, I would bet you that there's probably uh, you know, one in Columbus, Ohio, and Fresno, California, and um, Shreveport, Louisiana, right? Uh, these days, angel investors seem to be everywhere. Um, and if they're, uh, and even if they aren't in your town, you can probably connect with them online because of the Zoom, uh, the Zoom epidemic that we're having. Um, and the trick with this is really to, uh, and there are a couple directories online as well um, that you could, you could Google, um, and, and oh, sorry, and LinkedIn as well. Uh, of course, um, you find people like me, like I have angel investor. It's kind of blacked out in my LinkedIn title. Speaking of that, let me put in my LinkedIn in case anybody wants to connect. Um, there's LinkedIn. Happy to hear from you guys. Um, if you do want to uh, link in, I'd be happy to connect. Uh, I don't use that LinkedIn messenger, though. If you want to contact me, please do the uh, contact form through scottfox.com because uh, I'm an email guy, not a messaging guy. Um, anyway. Uh, LinkedIn has lots of groups, um, although some of us hide our affiliation as investors because we just get inundated <laughs> with random pitches. Um, but what I was going to say before we wrap up today is that uh, the angel investing is in VC too, but uh, especially with angels, it's really about the relationship. Uh, so you want to go into the relationship with some targeting. You don't just every person you meet pitch them, right? You want to figure out if you can, um, what are the things that they invested in? How much do they invest? Are they still investing? You know, um, what do they like? What do they not like? And of course, if you have a personal connection, right, you are from the same town or you went to the same school or you're related somehow, like all those little touch points are all about building trust and credibility because nobody's going to write you a check just based on uh, a presentation deck and a smile, right? That I know the media loves to make it sound easy, but it's not. And, uh, it's, ba it's a sales process and you need to be a likable, trustworthy person before anybody's going to write you a check. And that starts with um, being respectful in the sense of figuring out that they might even be interested, right? If I only invest in uh, late stage hardware startups, then, and that's no well-known thing. And it's not always well known about angels, what they do, it's kind of private market, right? But, but if I'm known as a late stage hardware investor and you bug me, to invest in your early stage, uh, you know, biotech startup, then that's, that's disrespectful. Honestly, I don't, you know, of course I'm not going to help you. I'm busy, right? <laughs> I got a plenty of people pitching me late stage hardware startups, right? So it's incumbent on you as founders to, to do enough research to, uh, to do a targeted pitch, uh, and then try to get the warm introduction. Uh, and the best way to do that is, uh, they always say, if you ask for money, you get advice, but if you ask for advice, you might get money. So just be friendly and ask for advice. And uh, most people who are in a position to be an angel investor uh, are happy to give advice to the extent that they have time. And by giving advice, you start to build a relationship and that might lead um, certainly to better advice or introductions and maybe even to some money or at least introductions to money. Um, so that's what I would do to look for angel investors. Okay, well, there we go. So I hope that is useful. That was uh, a solid hour there. Great questions. Uh, let me give you a couple uh, notes here. Um, we've got some upcoming events. Uh, what am I looking at? Oh, okay. So yeah. So if you could, would you like and share and comment and follow all that stuff, right? I spent a lot of time doing this, uh, but I don't spend time marketing it. So I need your help. Um, if you would just tell your friends, invite your friends and like and comment and share those drive all those algorithms that drive Cliff and me crazy, that social media nonsense, right? Um, but that's how this works, right? I even 
I even click like on my own comments, right? Because then it, I've seen it. It helps, right? So the more you guys can click, that would really be helpful to me. And if you're listening to the podcast version of this and could leave a review on iTunes or whatever podcast platform you use, that would be great too, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So this is free. That's the only cost if you don't mind. And of course, you're all welcome to connect with each other and make some new friends um, through the chat rooms as well. And connect with me on LinkedIn if you'd like. There's a hundred other episodes of Scott Fox Radio podcasts on uh, blogtalkradio.com. And my YouTube channel has a hundred plus videos. And be happy to see all of you on September 9th, which is our next monthly Masterminds Startup Accelerator Workshop. And that's a group like the nice people you saw on camera here today, all uh, 30 or 40 of us all together. And we do a bunch of networking and questions and answers. And those run two, two and a half hours. Lots of fun, very educational, lots of repeat guests uh, because it's a, it's a great service and lots of fun. And last, let me just remind you, if you haven't already, please come and join our email lists. And uh, then you'll hear from us again uh, about next time. And that's all I've got, I think. Yeah. Okay. So I uh, appreciate you. Thank you for your help. Uh, the mission here is to encourage access to innovation and investment capital. And uh, with your help, uh, we're doing that a little more every time. So thank you for being here. Please tell your friends and I hope to see you next time. That's all for now.